If you guys want to learn how to make a GUI open when a part is touched in Roblox Studio, then watch this video all the way to the end. Hey guys, in today's video, I'll be showing you how to make a part open a GUI when touched in Roblox Studio. Let's get into it. So the scripts are in the description and let's get started. Okay, so first you want to make your part and make sure it's anchored. And I'm just going to make it a bit bigger like that. And we'll color it. Okay, we'll rename this to GUI part. The name doesn't really matter. I'm just doing this so it's nice and neat. GUI part, there we go. Okay, so now insert a script into it. This is the script that will be in the description. So I'm going to just quickly write it out. So script.parent.touch connect function hit. So basically what's happening is whenever this part gets touched, it is getting uh, the part that hit it. But let's actually create a variable for debounce. This is that it won't spam open the GUI so many times. Okay, so then we're going to say here if hit.parent find first child humanoid then. So if it finds a humanoid in the part that's touched it. So if your foot has touched this part, it will look to see if there's a humanoid inside of the model, which there is because you're a player. So I'm going to say if game dot players uh, find first child hit dot parent dot name then you're a player so this is detecting if you're a player in the game because an npc could touch this and this would still work for it we only want this to work for players so then we get the local player is equal to game dot players get player from character hit dot parent cool so then local ui or gui so you could use script wave child so now we have to actually make the gui so insert a screen gui under started gui and set resell and spawn to false i mean i'll just rename this to gui open but obviously you'll probably have one already made then we'll insert a frame there we go and we can put this into that part or into the script sorry Wait for child and then the name of your GUI, so mine's GUI open. And we say GUI clone. Oh wait, we have to first detect the debounce. So if debounce is equal to false, then set the debounce to true so it doesn't spam clone this GUI. So that's the player. And we're going to say here if player dot player GUI find first child GUI dot name, then we're gonna oh no if we'll put it not so if it doesn't find this gui inside of the player then it will clone it so gui clone local clone is equal to gui clone then clone dot parent is equal to player dot player gui okay cool so now we can actually go and test this real quick so if we step on here this will show up and if we go into the player GUI, you'll see GUI opens there. And if we step on the part again, there is not another one because we detected if the GUI was already here. So there's only one of these. And now I'm gonna show you how you can make it disappear or you can add a close button into this. So to make it disappear, what we do is say spawn function GUI. And we're gonna put this into this and then we'll say task dot wait this is how long you want the gui to show for so i'll do three seconds and then clone destroy okay cool so let's test it out real quick so in the player gui boom gui opens here and it should destroy there we go so okay it's not working again okay so let's just check here oh yeah because we haven't said that debounce back to true so debounce will be one second so debounce is equal to true i actually don't think we need this spawn function that was just in case just to see what would happen okay let's place that back there okay so let's see what happens now play gui so here's the gui and it goes away okay and it doesn't work again just check what's happening so debounce is false, debounce is, oh, 
because we set it back to true sorry we're supposed to set it to false the script that will be in the description will be the fully working version so now if we go here gui is there then we can go back and it works again and if we step in it while the gui is here you'll see nothing else happens there we go okay so now let's add a close button to this so we're going to get rid of that because we don't want to destroy it so now in the gui let me just drag it here so i can see what i'm doing add in text button we'll make it red and we'll go to there i'll just put a big x and then i'll just put a font onto it make it big there we go our name is the close button Okay, so now insert a local script into this. Script up parent dot mouse button one click. The script will also be in the description. Script dot parent dot parent dot parent destroy. So parent parent parent. Okay, cool. So if you're if you've got like other frames here with this button in it, you'll want to adjust the script to add more parents to it because uh your gui will obviously be different. So for each thing that's in the way, so like look, if I add in a frame. Then we'll have to add another parent to this because there's an extra like thing on top that you have to add into it so mine's only three because look the script's in here one two three and it's got three parents in here so that's what parents are okay so now let's drag it back there and let's test it so if we go in here and then step on it again it will not come back we can close it and now Okay, uh, I think I know what this is. Pretty sure this has to be a script because scripts detect scripts and they don't detect local scripts. So let's delete that. Let's try it again. So we step on here. Step on again, nothing happens. We delete it. And there we go, it came back. So yeah, you can add in other things into this GUI, but I just added a simple close button. So yeah, that's it for today's video. Bye guys.